Hello, everyone. You're about to hear a brief retelling of the movie Rumble in the Bronx. Enjoy watching it. Chinese man Kyong flies to his uncle Bill's wedding in New York City. Kyong marvels at Manhattan except his uncle's store is located in the Bronx, a dangerous gang neighborhood. Kyong's father was a famous kung fu master. The man followed in his footsteps and became a champion of the martial arts in Hong Kong. He saw the trainer and couldn't help himself, so he patted the wooden mannequin. An enthusiastic Danny, a neighborhood kid in a wheelchair, patted him on the back. Kajong gave him his own set-top box, which made the kid very happy. He has no parents, only an older sister. Bill shows his nephew his grocery store. Today he is going to sell it. Kyong went inside to meet his uncle's future wife. But he was wrong. Bill didn't fall in love with a Chinese woman, but with a dark-skinned Bronx resident. What can I say? Welcome to America. Alina, the future owner of the business, walked into the store. Bill's is advertising the store. It's the only supermarket for eight blocks. Future auntie complimented Kyong's muscles and he wanted to show off in front of the mirror. Except it was transparent and Alina also appreciated it. Kyong walked into the office and realized that the girl had seen him wriggle. The contract was signed. Bill invited Alina to the wedding to be held tomorrow. The groom rented an expensive antique 38 Buick limousine from a friend. He is going to pick up his bride in it. At night, Kyong is awakened by the roar of motorcycle engines. There are punks rampaging right under the window. The two gangs are having a competition. The girls have to ride their motorcycles through parked cars, smashing them along the way. And in line with the other cars was an expensive limousine. Kyong panicked and realized he had to intervene. He went down the stairs and covered the limo with his body. Because of that, the girl in red lost. Just at that moment the police arrived and dispersed the punks. Kyong met Alina again at his uncle's wedding and suggested that the girl help her with the store this week. That way Bill would have a quiet honeymoon. While lightly charging, Kyong heard a report of a robbery. Seven million dollars worth of jewelry had been stolen. The newlyweds went on a trip, and the apartment was left in Kyong's possession. As he was handing Alina the papers, the store was swarmed by goons. One of them drank juice from cans and stole some chocolates. Alina is not going to turn a blind eye to this, but in response to his demand for payment, the Gopnik smashed the can on the floor. Alina asked the Chinese customer for protection, but the scoundrels were from the same gang. That's when Kyong took over. He was immediately surrounded on all sides. Angelo pulled out a huge knife. Alina was frightened and started to apologize. But the fight could not be avoided. <laughs> In the end, all the perpetrators were beaten. But Angelo was broken, and the Chinaman received an extra spanking. Alina was speechless at what she saw. To the locals, Kyong instantly became a hero. He worked until the store closed. Sparkle slipped between him and Alina. Kyong helped the girl close the blinds and went home with her shopping through the cottage district. Then he saw some scoundrels dragging the girl into an alleyway. Kyung rushed after them and pretended to be the police. The victim of the attack was rescued. But she immediately kicked her rescuer in the balls. It was a trap, and a hunt with bats began for the hero. After beating several of his attackers, Kyung climbed over the netting and ran down the narrow street. But soon he came to a dead end. There was nowhere else to run. Dozens of punks blocked his path. Angelo was going to just shoot him, but Tony suggested he start by having some fun. The goons poured glass bottles out of the trash cans, and the bats were tricked out with rags. In this version of baseball the broken wall sprinkles bottles with shards and injures him. Some of the bottles fly right into him and there is no way to close against them. The wounded Chinaman fell to the pavement. Angelo wanted to finish him off, but the ladies were against it. An altercation between them led to the Gopoda taking a beating on Kyong. And he was left lying bloody among the splinters. Nancy the gangster turned out to be Danny's sister, and not the best. She might not come home for days. The kid tells her about Kyong a great guy who gave him a console. The boy complains that his cushion on his stroller is completely worn out. He needs a new one and Nancy promised to buy one. Covered in blood, Kyong was able to make it to his driveway. Danny said that was their neighbor and Nancy decided to help him. The man woke up completely naked. 
Nancy undressed him and treated his wounds. How old is she? 21. She's a hottie. The girl herself supposedly went to work. Kiong went to the store to help Evelyn, but the punks were after him again. Kiong goes for the ducks. The bandits chase him, smashing everything in their path. The poor guy hides in the parking lot, but the thugs with bats can't keep up. Whenever possible, Kyung knocks out one at a time. When he was pinned to the edge, the brave man climbed to the roof of the parking lot simply by climbing from floor to floor. At the top he hid in the car with the balls. The owner of the car and the balls didn't like it and gave the Chinaman away. The thugs decided it would be a lot of fun to push the car off the roof. Kyung managed to escape at the last moment, the chase continued. The exhausted hiker was backed into a corner. Angelo offered to let him go if Kyong would kiss his ass, but he kicked the bandit with a torn off antenna and decided on another desperate move by jumping from one building to another. No one dared repeat that stunt. The robbers found buyers for the stolen diamonds, but something went wrong. The dark skinned bandits were shot and killed. Their car was involved in an accident near Kyong's house. The punks were hanging out there. They stripped the wounded men of their gold, and Angela stole the briefcase. The costumed criminals drove up and shot up the cars. Angela discovered a bag of diamonds in the case. There is a chase after him. The gopper tripped over Danny's chair and shoved the jewelry into his cushion. The big guy took Angelo at gunpoint, and Kyong quietly dragged the chair into the apartment. But the punk got lucky, the house was surrounded by police. They were all arrested. Kyong carried Danny home. The boy was very happy. His sister bought him a new pillow. The bandit hides to avoid being seen by a neighbor. But Danny's words about how much he loved her touched Nancy. She went out and apologized to Kyong. The kid was surprised that the two already knew each other. An old pillow with diamonds ended up under the couch. The scumbags in suits belonging to the White Tiger faction had to be let go. They weren't wearing anything. The cops let Angelo go, too, so they could put a tail on him. At night, the White Tigers returned to the house and searched the driveway. To Kyong they introduced themselves as FBI agents and gave their card. The Chinaman showed up at the club where Nancy works as a dancer. Tony and his men also showed up. Nancy is his girlfriend, and right now she sat down to talk to Kyong. Soon they were spotted by one of the goons and told the man in charge. The couple had to flee the club. They fled on Nancy's motorcycle. The girl decided she liked Kyung better and kissed him. Elena whose store had been trashed by punks, had to pay the price. Tony asked her where she could find Kyong. While the goons were partying in the store, the white tigers threw the two in the trunk and kidnapped them. But only Angela knows where the pebbles are and he got on Danny's tail. When the adults moved away, he threw the kid out of the gurney and took away the pillow, but found nothing inside. During punk's interrogation, one of them was thrown into the crusher. And what came out of the back ended up in a black bag. Kyong came to the trash store. He learned that he was the one they were looking for for hooking up with the girlfriend of the local gang leader. Elena is disappointed in her friend, and Kyong decides to take revenge on the punks and asks Nancy to transport him to their lair. The enraged Kung Fu player was going to pummel the criminals. But Tony just pointed a gun at him. However, when Nancy approached, he decided to deal with the enemy with his fists after all. Punk could do nothing against the Kung Fu champion and was soon beaten. The enraged Chinaman started working the rest of the thugs as well. Kiong was on the verge of getting hurt many times. But his agility and speed helped him avoid danger. When he got his hands on a ski run, the punks began to fall back one by one. The fight was stopped by Tony shooting into the air. He conceded that Kiong had won. The Chinaman hoped that the next time they met, they wouldn't fight, but sit down and drink Cheka. Here one of the kidnapped men stumbles into the den with a bag of mincemeat. If they don't get back what Angela stole, it will happen to everyone. Kyong suggested they seek the help of the FBI. That's how he accidentally turned Angela into the White Tiger Gang scumbags. The blonde man was shot in the leg and confessed to hiding the diamonds in Danny's gurney. The bandits broke into the apartment and gutted the new cushion. There were no diamonds inside. Kyong got punched in the stomach for that, and Danny said he knew where the jewels were. True, he pointed to his sister's costume jewelry and immediately got punched in the face. At the same time, Kyong realized where the diamonds were, but he wouldn't give them up and beat the bandit with a crutch. 
He wanted to punish the muzzleloader for beating the kid, but he couldn't take his punches from the Chinaman. So Danny threw him a crescent wrench. Kiong threw out the diamonds. What is the difference between these diamonds and my sister's? I think it's $7,000, oh oh. The bandits got a call from the headman, but Kiong picked up the phone. He offers to trade the jewels for his friends. Kiong sends the kid to school and stops by Alina's store. Renovations are in full swing there. The place looks like new. Kiong asked the girl for somewhere to hide the stolen diamonds. She would like a couple of pebbles as compensation. The man in charge drove up to the store and asked Kiong to go down to the sales floor. Nancy went to the bathroom, almost stealing a handful of diamonds. When Kiong came downstairs, he saw a bunch of chains that were strung all over the supermarket. He tried to warn Alina of the danger, but she refused to come out. The truck pulled on all the chains at once, and the building collapsed in seconds, like a house of cards. The ruined girl was left standing with her pants down in the middle of the street. The boss called again. He set up a meeting place. In an hour the diamonds should be at his place. This time Kyong called the real police. The cops put a wire on Kyong and gave him one pebble to show the bandits. Kyong's job was to get them to talk about the murders and the robbery. The meeting was set at a restaurant on the pier. Mustache checked out the pebble. Kyong promises to bring the rest after his friends are released. He made the mistake of mentioning their boss's nickname. They guessed that the Chinaman might be wearing a wire and took him into the boat garage. That's right, there was a microphone hidden in his hair. The boss gave the order to kill Kyong and the hostages and spit on the diamonds. But Kyong is in no hurry to die. He fights off the bandits and hides among the garages. True, he got stuck between the walls. The bandits were distracted by a cop, but it was more important to him to put a cigar in his mouth and he got shot. Kyong worried about his friends and decided to act on his own. At the same time, the bandits took hostages and hijacked a hovercraft. Kyung also managed to jump on it at the last moment, but immediately fell out caught by the rope. The boat is pursued by police. The bandits shot the helicopter and almost crushed the fishermen. At the beach, they also didn't slow down and drove onto dry land, nearly crushing dozens of people. Kyung saved a little girl at the last moment. He himself was still run over by the boat. But Kyong was lucky there was sand underneath him. He jumped onto the boat, which had already pulled into the road and rammed the bus. The boat was demolishing one car after another. Kyong flew off it and almost got hit by a truck. The killer didn't even spare the Lamborghini. He also stopped at a rock concert. The cops don't know how to stop this hovercraft monster. So Kyong steals a huge disassembled sword from the museum and gets in the Lamborghini. Demolishing the door. He positioned the blade outside and ripped through the airboat's cushion on the move. The Machina destroyed a few more stores and finally came to a stop. Kyong climbed inside and wounded one of the bandits and learned where the hostages were being held. Soon Tony and Nancy were freed, and Kyong got his chance to get back at the White Tiger boss and ride him and his guards for gold in a speedboat. Thanks for watching. If you like the video, rate your likes and subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to leave your impressions of the movie. Bye.